Hello, it's Scott Manley here. A couple of weeks ago, Ren from Corridor Crew got in touch with me. We met in Huntsville, Alabama for ThinkerCon. We actually toured the ULA rocket factory together and uh, had a lot of fun. But he had an interesting question for me as a scientist. He said, what would happen if the Universal logo was real. When I was young, Universal logo was just basically the planet Earth rotating and the word Universal in front of it. And sometime in the 1990s, thanks to the power of computer graphics, it became these massive letters swinging down from space, coming around the planet and then assembling into the word Universal right in front of the planet. Huge, like planet-sized letters. And so you can imagine something this big would be very impressive. I mean, so first thing I began to think about was when you look at the animation, the word assembles on the night side of the planet. So those will be reflecting a lot of light onto the planet Earth. In fact, the illumination on this is all wrong. I don't know how you would actually see the word universal given that the sun is behind it. But ignoring that, this would probably ruin things for astronomers. See, astronomers obviously need dark skies, and if you've got a lot of light shining down, that ruins it. And you, these guys are fans of the universe, and they will no longer be fans of universal. But then I thought about this a bit more, and I realized that these giant letters flying in the vicinity of the Earth are just going to be pulverizing any satellites that get in the way. These satellites are going to be smashing themselves onto the letters like bugs hitting the windshield of a car or the wings of my plane. So the good news is, if you look at the letters, they actually don't come down low enough to hit the satellites in low Earth orbit. They don't go high enough to hit something in medium Earth orbit. They spend most of their time in the Van Allen belt, so most of the Earth satellites don't smash into them. However, the gravitational force from these giant letters will no doubt slowly disrupt the, or the orbits and everything will slowly deorbit onto the Earth. And of course, to really cover the gravitational effects, we need to think about how big these letters are. And thankfully, Ren actually did the math for me. He modeled uh, stuff and he said, these letters, based upon the color and texture, they are probably made of solid platinum, which, uh, by the way, would require pretty much disassembling not just our solar system, but several other solar systems to get enough of. But whatever, uh, we have about one-fifth of a, an Earth mass of platinum in these forms. And something this big won't just knock satellites out of orbit. It will change the shape of, its, or of the Earth through tidal effects. So I coded up this little simulation to try and figure out the ideal shape of the Earth. What you're doing is you're adding up the gravitational forces and trying to figure out the minimum energy surface. Uh, it's pretty simple, but it gives us this sort of egg-shaped Earth when you move this large object in. When I apply all of the objects with their own individual masses, the bulge is only about 300 kilometers you know, between the highest and the lowest. Now this is a static stable solution. If the Earth was frozen in place and allowed to relax into its shape, this is what it would be. But the Earth is still rotating. The reason why we have tides in the ocean is because the Earth rotates and the Moon is pulling this bulge around the Earth slowly. At least that's one way of looking at it. The, the tidal bulge is like half a meter. In this case, it's hundreds of kilometers. So you have to imagine that the oceans are being dragged all the way around the Earth scouring the equator clear. If you want to best appreciate the Earth, it's a good idea if you have a boat so you can float around the surface of the Earth for a good amount of time. But you have to appreciate that beyond this, it's the entire planet that is actually flexing. This is going to mean the mantle, the crust are all moving by this sort of level of motion. And that is going to generate a lot of problems tectonically. You're going to have earthquakes, you're going to have volcanoes. Beyond that, just the simple act of the Earth being flexed by this motion is going to heat the Earth up. Within a couple of months, it could be 100 degrees Celsius hotter, which is not conducive to life. The good news is that based upon the distance and the masses, the two bodies are outside, I say two, like the le the universal letters are outside the Roche limit of the planet Earth. So it's not literally tearing the planet apart, it's just distorting it significantly, thankfully. Now you need to think about what actually happens to those letters. This is not an instantaneous effect, like the tide takes some time to develop. So some super-powered, you know, Q-like studio head has generated this thing in orbit around the Earth. What happens next? Well, 
it looks actually like a time lapse because you can see the earth rotating down there underneath this. So do these things just remain there floating in space? Do, does the gravity somehow get cancelled out? Or do they just start falling onto the earth as the gravity pulls them down? And if that's the case, that is really bad, right? That is adding one fifth of the mass of the earth in terms of high velocity platinum smashing the earth and ruining everything, basically sterilizing the earth for millions, hundreds of millions of years to come, no doubt. The other alternate is that they somehow get felled, held apart magically. That's not very interesting because then there's no gravity involved. A final option is that they are somehow then placed into stable circular orbits and we can then simulate it. And I can do this in Universe Sandbox. Planet Earth and all these planet letters. They're all made of platinum and they are in stable orbits. But when we start calculating the orbits forward, what happens is they start colliding into each other. And also the ones that are leading tend to get slowed down and some of those fall into the Earth. Other ones get accelerated outwards. But ultimately what happens is the Earth gets bombarded by huge amounts of platinum and it's pretty much not good for life on Earth. Eventually this might stabilize into a binary system with two objects, but yeah, that isn't great, is it? These letters are above what I like to call the potato radius. So the point, the potato radius is basically the radius at which an object has enough self-gravity to go from whatever irregular potato-shaped object it is and collapse down into a sphere. And I did the math. If you take uh, something the size of these letters, which are thousands of kilometers, like 10,000 kilometers tall, they will collapse down into spheres under their own gravity. Even better, I actually did the math on the, com uh, the potential energy. So you know, I just took the potential energy of a sphere, and then I took the potential energy of a 1,000 by 1,000 by 8,000 kilometer block of platinum. And there's a lot of energy in there. There's enough energy to raise the temperature of the platinum to its boiling point. Now, it doesn't all boil because the latent heat of vaporization is really big, but we do end up heating this thing up to about 2000 Kelvin, assuming that all the energy from the collapse is converted into heat. The letters collapse into mini moons, which are 2000 Kelvin, and that means the heat that they are putting out is hundreds, if not thousand times the luminosity of the sun. So those astronomers who were mad at us are now even more mad because they are on fire. There's so much heat coming down from these things that it's going to start sterilizing the surface of the Earth. Now, the good news is that these planetary sphere things, they actually, because they're so conductive, they actually radiate heat out relatively quickly. I started doing the math on this. So like a, a 1300 kilometer radius sphere of platinum at 2000 Celsius, it, it cools at one Kelvin every 15 days. It takes uh, about 15 years to cool down by 500 Kelvin, which is, you know, quite a substantial cooling. So we're not talking about like age of the solar system timescales here. It, the interesting thing is these objects being made of pure platinum, they don't form a solid crust on the surface. You see, on the Earth, the Earth is made of different materials, and so the light materials, the silicates, rise to the surface, and those form the crust. And the crust, because it's not liquid, that means there's no convection, and that reduces the heat flow. But with pure platinum, that doesn't happen. Anything that freezes, well, solid platinum has a higher density, and so it sinks down in. So there's efficient transportation of uh, heat to the surface continuously as these things cool down. Now, the other thing about this is that this whole collapse process isn't like smooth, right? This is going to be rough, it's going to be irregular. And to simulate this, Universe Sandbox is just not the tool for the purpose, right? But there's this thing I found called Space Sim, which uses something called smoothed particle hydrodynamics. You basically are modeling the object as a bunch of small uh, objects. And I'm saying that the object, we can model the letters that way, we can also model the Earth that way. The idea of smooth particle hydrodynamics is you can do things like smash planets into each other and see if you can make the moon. It's a lot of fun. So if you put these letters into orbit in the shape they are, 
you can watch them begin to orbit, begin to collapse down, releasing that energy, getting very hot. And then what happens? Well, they start splashing out chunks of platinum and they start merging. And in this one simulation that I ran, it got way worse than that. The collision of multiple letters, well, it just threw a whole bunch of platinum beyond the Roche lobe across and onto the Earth. So we ended up with this giant planet-sized jet or stream of molten platinum. Like, <laughs> a, a jet of molten platinum, the mass of the moon, descending across the, or the surface or the equator of the Earth, just like tearing up everything. So boiling away the oceans. I'm sorry if you had your cruise ship there and you were okay. I'm sorry, you've just been buried under a moon-sized mass of platinum. This is clearly very bad. This platinum is so heavy, it doesn't just hit the surface and form a crater. It goes through the surface because it's so much denser and it will cause like plumes of other, uh, it'll displace the, the mantle and you'll get this large crack fractures and volcanoes. All that stuff will be going wild. There'll be so much energy put into this system over the coming months and weeks, the entire surface of the Earth is going to go molten. Not only that, that as it splashes down, it's sufficiently got enough energy that it actually kicks parts of the Earth up into a debris ring around the Earth. So there's a mixing of material. And some of that will eventually end up on this single large platinum moon. And the interesting part about that is that this will then form a solid crust on the surface because it's lighter than the platinum. The platinum that hits the Earth will sink down to the core and eventually over millions or hundreds of millions of years, everything will solidify again. The oceans will form again. The atmosphere will come back and we will have two planets with enough gravity to support an atmosphere and an ocean that are very close together and we can now just, uh, we now have life. <laughs> we have a place for life to form, assuming that life somehow survived. I think, uh, you know, if you were in this situation, probably the best place to be would be a nuclear submarine. They will be secure against a lot of the really bad stuff at the poles. But boy, this is just a disaster on a global scale, a level which is unimaginable. And I wonder what kind of super powerful alien would choose to do this to the planet Earth. And I, I'm now struggling to think, what universal movie was so bad that it would offend an alien to the point where it would murder the entire planet Earth in this cruel and unusual manner? And then I remembered Cats. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.